Okay, Assalamu alaikum. Um, this is the uh, week three lecture for image processing and uh, computer vision. Here we are going to talk about the mathematical image representation. How do we represent images in terms of mathematical equations? Now, uh, the contents of this lecture, we are going to talk about image interpolation, comparison of interpolation approaches, uh, basic relationships between between pixels, how we measure the distance within an image, mathematical uses, you, uh, mathematical tools used in image processing, and finally, we are going to talk about uh, the set of logical operators inside an image. Now, how do we uh, interpolate an image, or how do we uh, understand an image? So uh, interpolation is uh, is used in tasks such as zooming, shrinking, rotating, geometrically correction, uh, correcting a digital image. So our principal objective is to apply the interpolation and apply image uh, resizing, shrinking with basic image resampling methods. How do we apply these in uh, uh, these operations so interpolation interpolation is the process of using known data to estimate values of unknown locations yani for instance for instance we have an image which is of size 50 by 50 how do we change this image to a larger size of size 100 by 100 so how uh, here uh, you see uh, 50 by 50 we have around 2500 pixels here we have 10,000 pixels how do we estimate the unknown pixels okay how do we estimate the unknown pixels the first method is called the nearest neighbor interpolation in this method we assign an intensity to a point in the overlay which is the new uh, or unknown uh, spaces of the new image we look at the closest pixel in the underlying original image and assign the intensity of that pixel to the new image. Okay, so we check our nearest neighbor. So if let's say our nearest neighbor have a value of uh, 150 intensity, so this pixel, okay, this is our nearest neighbor. So this is the pixel uh, in question. So we are going to assign 150 to this pixel so so this is called nearest neighbor interpolation where we assign the values of the nearest neighbor one nearest neighbor to that uh, value now a more suitable is the bilinear interpolation because remember in the previous method in the nearest neighbor it's called nearest neighbor we have only one neighbor bilinear we use four nearest neighbor so this will give us a better estimation of what actually is the value so if we have the uh, pixel which is v x and y we estimate the value of that pixel using pixels a b c and d which are the four nearest neighbors of our um, actual pixel which is at x and y so we use four nearest neighbor which is called the bilinear interpolation the third type is the bicubic interpolation in the bicubic we use 16 nearest neighbors and we use this equation you can see here we sum i from 0 to 3 that's 4 and we sum j from 0 to 3 that's 4 so this will give us a square of 4 rows and 4 columns so in total it is 16 neighbors so we check the 16 neighbors so if our pixel is somewhere sorry our pixel we are checking this pixel over here so we check all the 16 neighbors in the bilinear we check only four neighbors here we check 16 neighbors in the nearest neighbor we check only one neighbor this is an example you can see here we have an image which is originally was 390 dpi and dpi we said dots per uh, inch so we have here 390 we shrunk the image we made the smaller size smaller to 72 
So 72, we started with uh, the nearest neighbor technique over here, and here the bilinear technique, and here is the bicubic technique, and we can see that this image over here shows very high details. This one, the bicubic, it used 16 neighbors. This one, it used four neighbors. This one, it used one neighbor. And we can see here, the image has very good restoration. We restored the image by the, using 16 neighbors. And you see, you can see that this image is quite good compared to this image. Remember, both, both the, all three of the images are uh, a 72 uh, dot per inch of the original 903 images, uh, 903 dots per inch for the same image. Now, the basic relationships between pixels, first we have the co what we call N4P. N4P means we have four neighbors for the pixel, and these four neighbors are X minus one Y, X Y minus one, x1 x plus 1 y x y plus 1 okay so they form like a plus sign this is called n for p the second type is n d p d starts for diagonal okay diagonal so we have n d p n d p of the pixel okay we have a certain pixel we want to find the relationship between the neighbors for that pixel and the last type is n8p and in n8p we have all the eight neighbors of our pixel p so we have n4p ndp and n8p now we want to talk a little bit about adjacency adjacency is when two pixels are set for adjacent if the two pixels p and q with the values from v where v is the set here we have it a set let's say it's a set of one are for adjacent if q is in the set of n for p so if q let me clear this one if q if q falls either here or here, or here, or here, then we say it is four adjacent. Eight adjacent, if Q falls somewhere in these, it's called four eight adjacent. And the final one is M adjacent. It has two um, conditions, two pixels, P and Q, with the values from V. Remember, the values should be from V. I will give you examples later on are m adjacent if q is in n4 of p or q is in nd of p and the intersection of n4 and p and n4 of q has no pixels whose values are from v let's see examples so here we have adjacency let v have a, have the value of 1 and 2 and we have these two pixels, P and Q. So, are, are P and Q four adjacent? The question here is, what is four adjacent? Four adjacent means this is P, so Q should be here, 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 or here. So, this one is not within the four adjacency. If this is valid, then we need to check is Q within the values of V or not. So in this example, we can see it's not four adjacent. Let's check if P and Q are eight adjacent. For adjacency to be eight adjacent, it should be first within these values over here. So is Q lying within these values? Yes, over here. Then the second condition, is the value of Q a subset of V? Yes, V is 1, 2. The value of Q is 
um, one, then it's right. Now let's assume, let's assume for instance, let's assume for instance that our point Q is this point over here. Now if the point Q is this point over here, is Q within the value, is Q within the eight neighbors of P? Yes, it is within the eight neighbors of P, but the value of Q is not a subset of V. So in this case, Q is not part of uh, V, or Q is not an adjacent of V. The final uh, example is for M adjacency. The first condition is Q and is in the N4 of P. So what is N4 of P? N4 of P is this pixel, this pixel, this pixel, and this pixel. So this one not valid. So our next Okay, our next option is to check the next um, condition. The next condition is Q in ND of P. What is ND of P? I will change ND of P to yellow. ND of P is this pixel, this pixel, this pixel, and this pixel. Remember, ND of P will form a diagonal. Okay, N P N. A D of P will form a diagonal. Yes, so it is Q is part of N D of P and the intersection and the intersection of N4 of P. Okay, the intersection of N4 of P. What is N4 of P? N4 of P, I will make it in blue. N4 of P is this one, this one, this one, and this one. This is the N4 of P intersected with, I will make it with red, which is the NQ, N4 of Q. N4 of Q is this one and this one. Of course, we have another one here, another one here. So, so we have an intersection between them. Now, these intersection has no pixels whose values are from V. What is the values of B? V are 1 and 2. What are the intersections? The intersections are 0 and 1. So 0 and 1, this means this one is a value of V. So here it is not an M adjacent. In this case, in this case, in this example, these two pixels are not M adjacent. Okay, so in M adjacency, we have to follow these rules. Next up is the digital path. A digital path or a curve or a pixel are the coordinates to a pixel Q with coordinates X, N, and Y, N. In a sequence of X0, Y0, X1, Y1, until X, N, Y, N. And the points X, I, and X, I minus 1 are adjacent. Meaning that the pixel and the next pixel should be adjacent. So here we can define different types of path depending on the different types of adjacency. So we can have an M adjacent path and a four adjacent path and eight adjacent path. Okay, so for example, here by the way, N is the length of the path, which is the digital path. If X zero is equal x0, y0 is equal to xn, yn, meaning the start point is equal to the close point. This, is, this means we have a closed path. And you can see here that we are having a path from here to here to here, or from here to here to here. Here we can have a path like this. In figure A, the, uh, between the top right and the bottom right points are eight paths. And in figure B, there are M paths depending on the adjacency. So connected compounds, connected compounds are objects. If you have a picture, uh, an image, and you have connected compounds, we call them objects. So let S represent a subset of the pixels of the image. This is our image. And we have here 
a subset of the image called S. Two pixels P and Q are said to be connected in S if there exists a, a path between them. So any objects within S is said to be connected if there is a path between them. Now, this is S and this is T. An object from S to T are not connected, so they are said to be different objects within an image. These terminologies are very important because later on we want to define objects within an image. How do we define them? If there is a connection, a connecting path between two pixels, this means that these objects are connected. Connected regions, as you can see here, we have region RI and we have region RJ. We can say that these two regions are connected if there exists a path between them. So regions are said to be adjacent, are said to be, uh, uh, are, if they are not adjacent, means they are not beside each other, they are called this joint, this joint. Here we, co we consider four and eight adjacency when referring to regions, no M adjacency. So here it's an eight adjacency. You can see that there is a path between these two pixels. For our definition to make sense, the type of adjacency used must be specified. For example, the two regions of ones in the figure are adjacency only if eight adjacency is used, because if we use uh, four adjacency, these two pixels are not four adjacent, they are eight adjacent. Now, background and foreground, how do we find define a background and a foreground? For instance, if I have a picture, sorry, if I have a picture and this picture contains a smiley face. Now, this is called the background and this is called the foreground. So the foreground is the actual object, the background is the background of that object. So how it is uh, defined? Suppose that an image contains K disjoint regions, okay, from RK for RK, so K is equal to 1 up to K, none of which touches the image borders, okay, you can see, none of which touches the image borders. Let RU denote the, denote the union of all K regions, and let RU complement denote the regions which are not uh, part of K. So we call RU foreground, so this is RU, and this is RU complement, which is the background. So the basic relationships, again, between images, we are going to talk about image boundary. What do we mean by image boundary? The image boundary are the pixels on the boundary of the image. The pixels are on the boundary of the image. We call them border. We call them contour. So the boundary of an image of a region R is the set of pixels in R that are adjacent to the pixels in the complement uh, of R. Stated another way, the border of a region is a set of pixels that is at least uh, that have at least one background neighbor. So this pixel has three background or four background neighbors and so on. For, for instance, this pixel has only one background neighbor, so it's considered also a boundary pixel. Distance measures, we have different types to, to measure the distances between the images. So for pixels P and Q, and S with coordinates X, Y, U, V, and W, Z respectively. D is the distance function of metric if D, if P, Q is greater than zero. The distance between points P and Q is greater than zero. This means that we have a distance. D, D, uh, the distance between P and Q is equal to 0 if and only if P is equal to Q. So if I'm at the same pixel, this means the distance is equal to 0. Uh, D, P, Q is always equal to D, Q, P. And D, P, S is always less than or equal to D, P, Q plus D, Q, S. These are the conditions for having a distance inside a, 
an image. So the first method is the Euclidean distance. The Euclidean distance between two images, it's just normal. Distance is equal to the square root of the difference, uh, the, the square of the differences of the points. So x minus u, v minus, uh, y minus v squared. This is x and this is u, this is y and this is v. So in distance measures, we have also the city block distance, which is the absolute value of x minus u plus the absolute value of y minus v. Previously, we had the square and the square root, so it gives us what we call the um, uh, city block distance. So in the case of d4 distance, again, d4 means uh, it's uh, d4 adjacent for x and y that is less than or equal to the same value of the diamond centered at x and y. Next we have the d8 distance, also called the chessboard distance, which is the maximum of x minus s comma y minus v. We, this is called the chessboard distance. Then we have the distant DM distance, which is which is which uses the M path between two points, M adjacency. Remember, in this case, the distance between two pixels will depend on the values of the pixels along the path as well as their neighbors. Previously, it's just the distance of the path without their neighbors. For example, consider the following arrangement of pixels and assume P. P2, P4 have the value of 1. P have a value of 1. P2 have a value of 1. P4 has a value of 1. P1 and P3 has the values of zeros. And suppose that V is equal to 1. So we have this figure. Now, to compute the distance dm between points P and P4, where P and P4 are these two values. So P and P4, here we have four cases. Case if P1 is equal to 0 and P3 is equal to 0, which, is, which are these two here. The length of the shortest path, dm, is equal to 2. So this is 1 and this is 2. Let me clear. So here... 1 and 2. So the length is equal to 2. Now, if P1 is equal to 1, here, see the change over here, and there is no longer... Uh, so now P1 and P are no longer adjacent, CM adjacency definition. So these P1 and... Sorry, P1 and P are no longer adjacent. So then the length of the shortest, shortest path will be 1. So here we are going to go uh, 3. 1, 2, and 3. Why? Because we have this adjacency. We have this now, this relationship here. We have this one adjacent, then this one adjacent, then this one adjacent. Now, if P1 is equal to 0 and P3 is equal to 0, the path will be equal to 3. We will go P. Sorry, I'm sorry. P, P2, P3, and then to P4. Now, if the case of all of them are 1's, the shortest path will be also equal to 4. We'll go 1, 2, 3, 4. Now, why we did not go this way? If we go back to the M adjacency um, definition, first, if one of the following conditions are true, if Q is N4 of P, this is the first condition. N4 of P means that... I will go here, n4 of p means that this one, okay, this relationship has higher 
than this one because this one is not true because v is equal to 1 in back here see v is equal to 1 so this one will never be true so first we go here then we go here then we go here and then we go over here in the case of the first case in case number one we went p p2 and then p4 because we did not have these as valued or valid relations and remember we uh, this one will make things easier but since we have uh, uh, n uh, n4 p as a valid condition then we will choose it first now um, some mathematical tools used in digital image processing first of all we use something called convolution okay which is element wise multiplication if these two if these were normal matrices we multiply the first row by the second sorry we multiply first row by first column then first row with second column and so on but here we do element wise multiplication and it has this symbol so a1 1 b1 1 here a1 2 b1 2 here a1 a2 1 b2 1 and a2 2 b2 2 over here if it was normal mathematical multiplications then we are going to do the first row multiplied by the second the first column plus the first row multiplied by the second column goes over here then the second row multiplied by the first column goes over here plus the second row multiplied by over here then we go column by row and so on so we generate but in image processing we use element wise operations so this makes things easier for us arithmetic operations between two images f of x y and g of y are bitwise operations only so we can do addition subtraction multiplication and division bit wise okay it's all bit wise so this is some uh, examples where we do averaging for an image and you can see this is the original image and how we can generate a final image just using simple uh, uh, simple operations in image processing you can see here we also uh, done some image subtraction we subtracted these two images from each other to get a better result some other logical operations are listed over here commutative law associative law distribution law de morgan's law all of these apply for images so it's similar to all logical operations i'm not go through them but i'm just listing them here to know that all the operations that we studied uh, apply to images here are some set and uh, logical operators this is phi which is empty complement intersection union a minus b b complement a intersected with b complement a intersected with b um, uh, union c so all of these are here here we have some operators and examples if this is b this is not b this is b1 b2 the, their intersection and so on some spatial operators uh, spatial will be discussing in week no in module number two in full details because these are the uh, core operations so we have single pixel operations neighborhood operations and geometrical spatial transformations so for single uh, operations we can create this function this is uh, what we call a negative of a function we will be discussing in full details in uh, module 2 uh, neighbor neighborhood operations similar to what we studied earlier with the uh, nearest neighbor to calculate the value usually we use a kernel of size m by n and we apply it to each pixel in order to get the values of its neighbors we are going to discuss this also in details so these are some uh, neighbor uh, values you can see here that this pixel over here is mapped based on its neighbors and we can get the output you can see how we can blur the image we can blur the image by using its neighbors to disguise 
the actual details inside that image. Geometrical transformation, uh, we use this equation, which is the new value, the new coordinates of x uh, prime, y prime are used by t, x, y, where t is a matrix. We have some useful operations over here. Let me show you. Here we have the identity matrix, which will transform the image as it is. Here we have scaling, okay, by using this matrix for matrix A in this equation. Okay, so this is our A, and this is our points X, Y, and 1, and this is our output image. Here we use uh, rotation by using cosine and sine. Here we use transformation. Here we use shear operation and shear operation horizontally and shear operation vertically to change the geometrical transformations of an image. This is basically all I have for you for this week. We will be discussing further this. Please watch this lecture before you come to class on week number three. Hope to see you all soon and thank you for everything.